Very, very long line. Here to share her thoughts and knowledge on the science and practical applications of treating at the root of disease and illness, please welcome Leanne Venier. Alcoholic. Okay. Thicker. Arrow. I'm assuming the arrow makes it go forward. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm going to be talking to you about some stuff about. I'm going to. I'm looking to shift some paradigms here today, actually. So, I'm going to talk about photobiomodulation, light therapy, um, biophysics, and energy medicine technology, and utilizing that, and real-world out outcomes and applications, and how to use that in real-world settings. Um, and just to start, I'm going to give you a little bit about my background, because people are like, how did you start doing what you're doing now? It was not planned by any way, shape, or form. I started off as an engineer designing submarines at Lockheed, so you can see the connection right there. Um, I, I, I didn't like that very much. I felt very unfulfilled, so I moved to Italy for seven years, spent seven years studying alternative healing modalities, starting with the physical body, then moving more up into subtle energies and energy medicine, um, connecting the dots between ancient and modern healing, and how color, light, biophysics, and energy medicine all integrate together. I uh, came back to the States and Canada to study Eastern medicine, acupuncture, and Zen Shiatsu. Had a healing practice working with cancer patients. Oops. Came back to um, Austin, and I started painting just as a creative outlet. And it was the paintings that became the catalyst for having all these conversations about how we respond to color and light. Because people would have very strong responses to the colors in my paintings and have these actual like physical cravings for them. And then I would explain to them how we do crave color and light just like nutrients that are vital nutrients for the body, just like food and um, water. So. In 2010, I finally, after much, much pestering from people, I finally put some of this information on my website because they wanted to learn more, and there isn't a book. This is hundreds of books and connecting the dots between all of these disparate fields of study. So I put it on my website, and then I started getting bombarded with invitations to come and speak at major medical universities, to teach medical doctors, medical students, and do interviews, and speak at different conferences, Mensa, South by Southwest Interactive, brain and neuroscience organizations started inviting me to come and speak at their organizations. Um, so I was doing a lot of conferences, putting videos on YouTube, and that's how it started really spreading. And people, more and more lay people and medical doctors became aware of the science behind the healing effects of color and light, that this is actually a viable healing modality, that the research has been going on since the turn of last century, and before that, really. But in 1903, for example, Niels Finsen won the Nobel Prize for medicine for discovering that red light heals smallpox and lupus. So this is not new research. Just the problem is that nobody was paying any attention to it. So I connected the dots for people and made it make sense, made the science and physics make sense, and connect it with the chemistry where the research has been done. 2016, end of 2016, I launched my own product line. That immediately took off, all from word of mouth, people, thousands of people around the world. I designed it for home use, and what ended up happening is that many, many medical doctors, hundreds of medical doctors, are using it for both themselves and then for prescribing to all of their patients. So, um, and then just recently, um, and oh, thousands of case studies. So I have a private members only community where I connect everybody that has my product so they can all talk to each other, and they share the results right in the community. And that's also like I get feedback, I give them specific protocols, and so it's like a two way. Um, it's like a giant research pool, essentially, of thousands of case studies. Um, and just a, two months ago, launched my own certification program for all the medical doctors and other healing practitioners that are wanting to learn more about understanding how to heal at the root of illness and disease using biophysics-focused and energy medicine technology. So all of that, that's <laughs> my background. Um, so. This stuff that I'm going to fly through right now, I normally have like an hour to talk about. So if you want to know more about any of the light therapy stuff, I've got lots of videos on YouTube. You can watch those later. Um, color and light are synonymous. We require them for optimal health. Um, and evolution required that we were under sunlight. So we know what happened when, you know, the sunlight went away, when the giant meteorite struck, everything on the planet died, almost everything. 
Um, so we need both sunlight and the life force energies found in nature. Um, sunshine and nature, these are necessary nutrients, um, and I call them color vitamins. So what you see here, do I have a thing? Yes, laser. So it, when you see a rainbow, that's, that's showing you all of the colors that are always present in sunlight. Whenever you go out under sunlight, you're, ba you're basically being bathed in all of these colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Um, so we actually crave them. And the problem is that the media has said that this is really bad for you, but everybody knows how amazing it feels to lay out under the sun. But, you know, and then you start slathering yourself with sunscreen. You're blo blocking all of those healing rays. So we actually need them. So we, we have a minimum daily requirement of sunshine that you need to get every day. Just like, you know, you don't want to drink too much water. You don't want to eat too much food. You don't want to get too much sunshine, but you need that minimum amount. So um, I call this the multi-spectrum or the full spectrum multivitamin effect. This is a spectrometer reading where you can actually see this is what it would look like in the middle of the day. These are all the colors that are found in sunlight. We also need this chi, prana, life force energy. Different cultures have different names for it. It's all the same thing. It's the thing that gives you that energy to get through your day. And I don't mean from caffeine. I mean like, the, you know, wake up in the morning, you bounce out of bed and you're full of energy. So there's an abundance of it in nature, which is why when people get, tend to get depleted, where do they want to go on vacation? They want to go lay on a beach or they want to go hike in the mountains or they just want to be somewhere surrounded by nature. The last thing you typically want to do when you're feeling tired and depleted is go to a giant chaotic city and be even more depleted because these kind of environments will drain your life force energy. So they things like cities, stress, poor diet, um, all of that stuff literally is like a siphon, taking your life force energy and siphoning out of your life force energy gas tank if you think of yourself as a car. So, so many people that have chronic illness and disease are literally running on fumes. I mean, they just barely have enough energy to get throughout the day and they have a chronic problem and well, it may start with an, as an acute problem, become a chronic problem and they just don't have the energy to heal whatever that problem is. So now I'm gonna be talking about, you know, healing at the root of illness and disease is looking at the energy level, first of all, because everything that manifests in the physical body is downstream from that. Um, so what ends up happening when you're running on fumes, you just feel exhausted all the time. And you see so many people that go through life like this, and this is their normal. It becomes their normal to be just exhausted all the time and just barely functioning and having very poor quality of life. So um, modern lifestyles, this is what, what happens because we do need to live in cities. You have a job, you work in an office building or whatever. So it, it happens so often that people get completely disconnected from nature. They're not getting sunlight. They're not going out in nature. They're not getting their bit battery recharges, I like to call it also. So that's what leads to disease ultimately. Um, so there's a lot of research, like literally thousands, tens of thousands of research studies on photobiomodulation and light therapy now. Again, more and more and more now that it's becoming more recognized and more widely, widely acknowledged. Um, but again, this started, you know, turn of last century. So, and in 1968, that, there was more research than when the first lasers came out. Um, so, and all of it because what is known in Western culture and the technology that exists that is widely available can read chemistry. So what they can look at is the chemical effects of these things. So you will see things like research on, you know, UVB and vitamin D effect. You know, the fact that when you get UVB and actually when you get UVB combined with UVA, you get even more vitamin D production, which is a very important hormone in the body. Um, so these, this is what gets analyzed is the, the end effect, what, what shows up in the chemistry in the person. Um, isolated vitamin effect, um, when you take blue light, for example, this has been around since the 1950s, treating babies with jaundice with just blue light, blue light wavelengths. And it com it, what they can see is that it creates an actual isomer change in the bilirubin so that it becomes water soluble and can be flushed out of the baby instead of being stuck in their blood. Um, using red light, uh, lots of research on red and near-infrared for stimulating and boosting mitochondria. It creates a cascade mechanism where you, it, it generates ATP in the cells um, he, for healing skin, muscle, joints, brain, inducing sleep, collagen, melatonin, um, uh, etc. 
So again, I'm flying through all of this because I want to get to a bunch of case studies so you can see like real world results, what, what happens when you focus on healing at the root. So the, again, these are you know just a tiny sampling of the things that have been studied in red and near infrared, skin regeneration, collagen boosting, anti-aging, it's a big thing in the beauty industry, um, skin disorders, e eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, muscle inflammation, pain, muscle performance and recovery for ath athletic performance, uh, joint pain and inflammation, broken bones, bone regeneration, all of this um, using um, UV for um, reducing or um, slowing down the rate of telomere shortening. And telomeres are the protective end caps on DNA. So all of this, again, we're looking at actual physical matter in the body, chemistry, um, autoimmune applications, cold sores, shingles, treating uh, viruses, bacteria, that sort of thing. So all of these, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of research for using different wavelengths in the colored spectrum in the invisible light spectrum. And normally I would give you a little lesson on the electromagnetic spectrum as well. So, but I wanna kind of focus on the biophysics aspects. It's not just the light and the sunlight that we need. We actually need these other healing energies that are found in nature. So have any of you been out in nature ever? <laughs> Everybody, do you know how that feels when you go out in nature? Like how different it feels from being in a city and you go out in nature and that feeling? Anybody? It's like, yeah, it's like, how does it feel? It's refreshing. Yeah, it's energizing, but it's relaxing at the same time. It's like gives you energy, but it calms you down at the same time. So that's, there's an abundance of life force energy. And again, whatever, whatever name you want to use. Chi is very commonly used in Eastern medicine, but it's kind of become a mainstream word now. Chi, ki, prana. Um, it's all the same thing. Um, so to heal at the root of illness and disease, you have to look at the energy body. Everything that happens in the physical body starts in the energy body. And the life force energy, the energy body controls the chemistry. I'm not sure where I'm pointing with this. Okay. Um, biophotonics is a field of research that started, well, really in 1922 with Alexander Gervich, who discovered that onions could communicate with each other. And um, plants communicate with each other using light. And what he discovered is that anim plants, animals, humans, we give off light. So in 1972, um, Dr. Fritz Albert Popp in Germany created the first photo photomultiplier, which was able to actually analyze and, and read this light that we give off, living light emissions, biophotons, biological photon, ultralight, weak um, light emission. This is a CCD camera that is, was developed at Kyoto University in Japan. Uh, 2009, they made it public that they have this super sensitive camera that can actually photograph living light emissions coming off of living things. So these are biophoton emissions. This is an infrared image, just to give you a contrast, so you understand that lower right-hand corner is infrared imagery. Um, so this is, a, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I have to go very fast now. Okay, so to give you, this is, um, uh, these are the meridians, because in Eastern medicine, everything is, it talks about the inner meridians, the energy lines that circulate that life force energy through the body. What happens is people often get very, you know, low life force energy levels. So it's not just a matter of opening up blo blockages in the energy channels, which is what acupuncture does, focuses on opening up those blockages and redistributing where there are excesses or deficiencies. It's also a matter of like filling up that gas tank. So acupuncture won't put energy in, it will open it up and redistribute the energy. So you need something that's gonna put the energy back in. And ultimately that would be like going out in nature, going out in nature and you know, being surrounded by those energies. But a lot, like I said, in modern lifestyles, a lot of people don't do that. This is the bladder meridian. This is just one example of many uh, primary meridians. Um, and this is um, an infrared imagery where, where you can see they're putting heat into the meridian. You can actually see that it's lighting up using infrared imagery, which corresponds to this. And it's not the nerves. Um, people think it's nerves. It's not nerves. It's, they're completely different energy pathways. Um, so this is a very important energy carrier, the bladder meridian. So if you think of it as a power strip, everything taps into the bladder meridian. Um, I wish I had more time to explain all of this to you, but... Um, uh, this is, it gives you a, just a general idea of some of the, the primary meridians on the body, and these are just the superficial aspects of them, and the gentleman previous was talking about the gallbladder meridian, and here you can see 
that it wraps around the head, it like zigzags over the head, which is often when people have one-sided headaches, it will be, you can look very, like directly, at, it's a blockage in the gallbladder meridian. Um, so the rejuvenator treats at the root of illness and disease, that's the product that I, that I launched, and it's healing systemically by treating the energy body and the physical body. Um, so now I'm going to talk about some case studies, and hopefully you'll be able to fly through a bunch of these, and you'll have a bunch of questions. And I'm not going to read through all the case studies, but I'm going to give you like kind of the title of synopsis, and some of them I'll dive deeper into. If you want to take photos of them, you'll be able to read the whole thing afterwards. Um, anyway, so um, using the rejuvenator to heal at the root of illness and disease for brain cancer, PTSD, skin issues, hormonal pain, neuropathy, infants, pets. I mean. We don't have anything that it hasn't been used for, that it hasn't worked for. Again, because it's not chasing symptoms, it's healing the energy body. Um, uh, this is one, um, one of my customers, uh, her daughter had a brain glioblastoma. Doctor said this was last March, and you're gonna see what happened, like the latest update um, just a few weeks ago, um, predicted that she had less than two weeks to live and she had this huge brain glioblastoma and started doing treatment with this. She, they, she also had her on a ketogenic diet, and, um, but doing the rejuvenator treatments, and here she is. Um, this, is. this is what I recommended for treatment, not just treating the brain, but also treating the kidneys, abdomen, upper back, base of skull, it's for the detox effect, um, and then treating the chest to, to stimulate melatonin production in sleep. Um, because you, that's very important when you have any kind of chronic illness, let alone cancer. Melatonin is very important, antioxidant for the body as well. Um, so here she is at 10 months, and this is, these are quotes from her mother that she posted directly in our community along with these images. Um, doctors are scratching their heads to how she remains alive 10 months after her predicted demise. I mean, they were like, supposedly one doctor said he bet his license that she'd be dead in March. I was kind of astounded that somebody would actually say that, but... Um, this third scan here, you can see that the cancer is completely clear. So this is 10 months later. Um, May 26th, this is just a couple week, few weeks ago. She's still in remission after a year. She was told um, her situation now, no longer, they have no concern about like a recurrence of the tumor. There's nothing, there's no sign that anything is coming back. And this came from a top hospital in Michigan. They have no explanation. Um, this is another brain tumor, um, uh, meningioma. This is another recent one. I just kind of pulled a handful just from the last few months just because like, there are literally thousands of them that are incredible. Um, so she also was following, already following a ketogenic diet for five months. So that alone wasn't getting rid of her meningioma. Um, so she got her number three rejuvenator. Treat, I told her, you know, treat the brain directly. She was also treating kidneys, um, doing the upper back. Again, these are these systemic treatments to treat the root of the problem and fill up that energy gas tank, essentially. Um, and open up blocked energy channels. So um, she got her three month follow up and they had told her that the, this and this she's very new, so she is only, hasn't been using it that long. But they told her that there's no way that this will ever shrink, it will only get bigger. And of course now it's like a, the first follow up, she's like it's get several millimeters smaller already. Um, here's another tumor. This is with a cat. I have all kinds of people that they're incredible healing reports for cats and dogs. I mean, like, and I, I wish I had more time because there was one with a cat that just had, like, it was, like, the doctor thought it was going to be dead the next day. It was so in rough shape. It had all of these lesions all over its face. Anyway, now it's like this happy, thriving, healthy cat. Um, this one, because we're in the tumor um, section here, this woman, 18-year-old cat, stage three kidney disease, um, and just a few months before he was diagnosed with cancer, he had a giant tumor in his intestines. And so she got the red, had gotten the rejuvenator to treat herself for her own Lyme disease. I have hundreds of people that treat, use it for treating Lyme disease. And cats and dogs and pets in general love lying in front of this. You turn it on if they need it, they will like be camped in front of it. Um, and she took him back for an ultrasound and the vet couldn't find the cancer they, at all. Like, and she kept feeling for it and rescanning for it. She's like, it's gone. I don't have any explanation for it. Um, and uh, let's see, the, oh, Down syndrome. This is, 
this, I really like this story because this is a grandmother who really wanted to help her granddaughter who had a severe hernia from a car accident where the, the seatbelt, you know, cut into her abdomen, but they couldn't operate on her because she was too overweight. So she got it specifically for treating the hernia, which it was treating already and helping with shrinking that. But, and I said to her, it's like, you know, like, let's see if it will help with the, her cognitive function because, you know, like she was having such a hard time in school, her memory and focus and concentration was terrible. She was like failing her classes, her teachers were really concerned. So she starts treating her brain, but in addition to treating the abdomen, and then now she's on the dean's list, essentially, the principal's list with a 4.0, and her teachers are thinking about putting her into a mainstream school. So, oh, and then she also started doing other things where she was like making the bed on her own, things that she had never done before, a task that she just couldn't do, not had any desire to do, and just wasn't able to, wasn't capable. capable. Um, John Taylor, this, this is another one of the videos I have on YouTube where I have an interview with him. Um, he had severe PTSD for 14 years. Uh, it started in Iraq. Uh, it was accumulation of you know, basic ongoing stress, life, fight or flight every single day that they're there where they're like possibly going to be blown up. And one particular incident caused him like just tipped the scale, the straw that broke the camel's back. He woke up the next morning without having doing anything. He didn't do anything as far as injuring himself, but he couldn't lift his head. He was in excruciating pain. It was the, it was the, that, like I said, straw that broke the camel's back trauma. And then he just, it started this whole cascade of like chronic pain, like debilitating pain. He came back to the States, couldn't get any help, couldn't get any relief from the pain, then started having all kinds of other physical issues um, where he got to the point where he couldn't digest any food. He would have, be hyperreactive to literally everything that he ate. So, um, and then ruminating thoughts, just like couldn't, you know, anxiety, and he couldn't remember anything. You'd have a conversation five minutes later, it's like he couldn't remember what they just talked about. So, you know, it's, he couldn't function. I mean, he's trying to get through life and he can barely function. So he ended up getting the rejuvenator, and I gave him the pr protocol for treating, you know, the abdomen and everything. He wasn't doing the depression and anxiety protocol yet, but it, so he, within two treatments, he's like, all the stuff that he had, all the abdominal issues that he'd had that were severe for eight, the previous eight years, he's the two treatments that's completely gone. Um, and then the pain, all of it, like, started healing in layers, and then I think it was about two months in, and then he's like, what can I do, or maybe a month in, what can I do for the the thoughts and the, the anxiety. And I said, oh, do the depression anxiety protocol, which is actually treating up here. And he did that once and he said maybe twice. And then that was all clear. So you can watch that, that video if you want. The reason I wanted to interview him about this is because then he went on to, not only is he now able to function in his own life, he created a nonprofit organization where he's doing music events for families in um, public parks. So taking that healing energy and now bringing it out into the world. Um, here's um, one of the medical doctors in my community. She's in Canada. She's an emergency room MD. She shared this story in the group, and she's like, Monica, one of her nurses, thank you, um, said um, she hadn't seen her in over a year, and it turned out she had had spinal surgery and then had, like, this severe, what they call reflex sympathetic dystrophic, dystrophic syndrome, um, where you can see her left leg here especially is completely swollen, numb, you know, all of this damage that was caused by damaging the, the nerve from the spinal surgery. And so she's like, oh my God, look at your leg, like you need to get a rejuvenator because she's used it for herself, this doctor, like I said, and recommended it to so many of her patients. Um, so she immediately got one. This is Dr. Karuna Sharma talking here. Um, after five days, she said the limp was gone, the foot's not purple, number painful. And then she saw her again in the ER, and she's like, you have, to, you have to share your photos in the community. So she's the one that kind of like nudged her to put, put pictures up. Um, anyway, and this is Monica herself talking after, you know, from her perspective, like how much she suffered and how many things she endured. 10 months, no relief, epidural injections, nerve pain medications, muscle relaxers, strengthening exercises. None of it was helping at all. Neurosurgeons, neurosurgeon told her there's no cure. Um, and so this is after 10 treatments here on the right, where you can see this was what she looked like before, and now you can see she had knee surgery at one point as well. Um, discoloring is improving, swelling is greatly reduced. Anyway, for the first time in months, I'm no longer limping when I walk. Uh, 
here, I love this picture because this is one of my customers in the group. She, the kid, like, I'm not even a baby person. I'm more of like a kitten and dogs. It's the cutest baby. Um, anyway, so this is her treating her baby that had severe um, gastric distress. Every time he would, she would try to get him to eat, and he would just, he have so much pain. She had him on Zantac. Um, what you're putting, you're giving a baby drugs already. <laughs> That's like it's only five months old. Um, so anyway, so she had gotten, she, the, she started off borrowing her parents' rejuvenator. She didn't even have one of her own initially. She was borrowing her parents, so she didn't have it all the time. So she started treating him. She put it on his tummy, and within five to six minutes, he was totally calm, passing gas, and happy. Um, you can see my foreband. I got a little bit wonky in the conversion here. Um, so another update 10 days later, she, he's like, after, ever since the first treatment, she, hadn't, she didn't have to give him another pill after that. And he's been having no tummy issues at all whatsoever. Then she also used it for herself. She got one for herself and for treating herself and her husband and like this long list of things that within like 10 days, they already <laughs> healed all of these problems. Thyroid, um, this is, there, I don't know how many dozens of case, cases we have of women and men healing their severe thyroid issues where they were being medicated, including the Canadian doctor. Um, so, and within, it's typically within one to two weeks that they have complete resolution. They don't have to take their medications anymore. You, if you take a photo, you can read through those, but I won't go through all of them. But it, all of these were, they all used to be on medication and now they're off. Um, eyes and vision, more than 100 cases of that. People treating their eyes directly as well as treating liver and gallbladder, which is the which is the energy system that connects with the eyes. Uh, floaters, uh, age-related macular degeneration, severe retinal thinning, bright light sensitivity, chronic uvitis, glaucoma, uh, improved vision. This is another doctor in the community. Um, he, had severe, he had chronic recurring uvitis. Um, thank you. Um, uh, so he's talking about the fact that he, had, he got it for peripheral neuralgia uh, because of the uh, blood sugar issues that he had. And he's like phenomenal help with his neuropathy and peripheral neuralgia. Um, and another problem that he was talking about is the fact that you do get these chron this chronic uvitis. And when you get a flare up, the only thing that Western medicine has to treat it is prednisone, which then causes, it has a major side effect of causing cataracts. So um, anyway, he basically did um, five, five days of treatment. Within the first day, he was already noticed a huge improvement and then did uh, four more days and then it was completely clear and he didn't need any um, prednisone. And you can see the photos that he posted there where he went to completely clear. It's extremely painful, by the way, when you do have this. I mean, pain, light sensitivity, extreme, you know, small pupil, decreased vision. Here's another one, macular degeneration. I have a bunch of these um, severe. This one, um, the woman, her, she was getting shots in her eyes. And once you, apparently once you start getting those injections in your eyes, you have to get them the rest of your life. Um, but the, this woman, it was her mother. She's like, let's start using the rejuvenator and treating your eyes and see if it'll help. So she did. And um, so less than three months of using the rejuvenator and the doctor, the macular degeneration is gone. He's like, she doesn't need the injections anymore. And she's like, well, is that common? He's like, I've never seen that before in my life. So um, anyway, she, oh, who else was that? Oh, another one, another uh, macular degeneration. So this is another one improving, but there, I've got tons of them. Um, floaters night vision. These are, um, oh, just a couple of examples of people getting rid of floaters. Again, dozens of people have reported in the group. I don't have floaters anymore. I'm one of them. Um, <laughs> so, um, reduced bright light sensitivity. Oh, again, these are just, like I said, a handful of examples that I just pulled from the last few months. Um, dry eyes, she had severe dry eyes, uh, bloodshot and blurry, but here down at the bottom, five weeks ago, I couldn't even get on this site to read. She, the, when, you're, when your vision gets so bad, you can't sit at a computer, you can't read a book, you can't read anything. I mean, it's painful. Um, so anyway, complete resolution, less than five weeks. Pain and injury, hundreds of cases of these, chronic and acute. Also, joint pain, joint injury, like torn meniscus, uh, torn rotator cuff, spinal subluxations, fibromyalgia. Um, this is somebody that had chronic shoulder pain and arthritis. Um, and... Less, less than three days with using the number three, no pain, full range of motion. His surgeon had said that there was no hope for any kind of healing, so complete resolution. I haven't felt this good in six months, wow. 
Um, Dr. Philip Shalo is a uh, chiropractor. I like quoting doctors that their area of specialization, <laughs> you know, like when he throws his back out, he doesn't go get adjusted. He puts his rejuvenator on his back. Um, so he, this is one case where he picked up something that was too heavy and he's like, I can, I know ex Alexander technique, I can do this. And he, he threw his back out immediately and immediately went to get the rejuvenator and put it on his low back. 20 minutes later, it's like feeling respectable, as he said, after a nap. Then it's like, and it's because it has a cascade effect as well. So even if people only do 20 minutes, which is the minimum treatment time that I recommend, because that's the time that it takes for the healing energies to circulate the energy body, then it keeps working. So if you stop at 20 minutes, it continues to do the healing after that. Um, so anyway, I've, by, the, by that evening, he was like, completely back to normal. Instead of typically with that kind of an injury, you're going to be out of commission for several days, if not weeks. Um, here's another one. One of the things that is another common thing for the psycho-emotional aspect and um, uh, like with the PTSD, uh, depression, anxiety, it people, when they start using it, even if they're only doing facial treatments for anti-aging, then they're like, I feel happier. I get that report all the time. It's like within the first week, it's like, I didn't even realize I had this low-lying anxiety all the time that was normal for me because I forgot what it was like to not feel it. So anyway, that's another very common report where people just like all of that anxiety and depression just gets lifted and they feel better. So he's, he particularly um, uses it for recovery afterwards because he's a NUCA practitioner and it's a lot of physical effort. So he's like, before he'd be like wiped out after a day of adjustments and now he's like recharged and can go again. And um, so he's able to help his um, patients a lot more effectively. Plus he also said he feels this, an improved sense of courage which is not uncommon either. Um, chronic pain, uh, chronic pain, let's see, I'm just gonna read the 12 days. Chronic pain, fatigue, uh, depression, um, it was this one, I'm, I'm 60 and I don't remember ever feeling like this before. So again, these, the changes are very fast and dramatic. And again, because it's like filling up that gas tank, you know, that life force energy gas tank. Um, Severe chronic and hip pain, uh, less than four months of use, was able to avoid surgery. This is a, thank you. Um, does that include my Q&A time? Oh, okay, perfect. Um, yeah, he was told that he was gonna need to have a hip, hip replacement, and now he's like, I'm, I, he fell asleep with the rejuvenator on his hip and woke up 40 minutes later. He's like, I not only had no pain, I actually walked so fluidly, I couldn't believe it. I felt like myself again, and a friend corroborated that my gait looked normal for the first time in how, however many months. Um, anyway. So again, we have like, you know, over a thousand of these case studies in less than two, two and a half years since I launched for skin, muscle, bone, joint, systemic. This is with adult children, infants, pets, eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, acne, scars, wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, severe sunburn, acute back spasm, chronic and acute pain, neuropathy, muscle boosting, and delayed onset muscle soreness. I have a lot of competitive athletes that use it also for amping up their game and are now world-class athletes. Like the, the trajectory that they've gone on because it really boosts muscle performance and strength and it reduces muscle recovery time. So you can like have like no pain after a workout, but you're still building your muscle. Um, bursitis, arthritis, torn meniscus, ACL, other joint injuries, uterine fibroids, a number of women that have completely avoided having to go under the knife because they, they, the fibroids vanish, they disappear, they get dissolved. Um, black mold, toxicity, Lyme disease, like I said, hundreds of people with that, cancer. Hypo, different kinds of cancer, also like stage four prostate cancer, lung cancer, and I think of a handful of other ones that people have treated that have reported directly in the community, hypo, hyperthyroidism, and more. Um, okay, so that's where more on my website. I do have a bunch of videos if you want to know about more about the light therapy component. Um, and did I cover it all? Am I good? <laughs> okay, so now if anybody has any questions, I just flew through all that very quickly, so. I see, yes. Uh, hello. When uh, somebody receives one of these units, how do they assess 
how to use it. Do you guide them directly, or does it come with a manual? Yeah, so there's a, there's a guidebook that everybody gets to get started that they download, and it's just got the basics here, put it here, put it here. Like, you can't, you can't do anything wrong with it, and you can't overdose on it. And people, like, so if you've got a joint injury, I give them basic instructions on how to treat those kind of generic things. And for specific things that I encourage them to get in the private members only community, they get a free membership that, you know, is like priceless because they get ongoing healing support that's customized and per personal to them. So, um, you know, and after two years of doing, more than two years of doing this and answering questions in the group by myself and with other people in the community jumping in and helping, now with the certification program that we just launched, that's part of their training. So it's an apprenticeship training program. So now they're answering the questions in the group, going back and, you know, pulling from two years of information that I've already shared in there because there's an encyclopedia of information. So now my apprentices go and do, you know, it's like, here, this is what Leanne said for that and here's the treatment and like, and they're learning at the same time, and then we have a once a month live meeting, so we dive deep into that. So yeah, there's a huge amount of support, but it's not just here, take this thing and figure it out. So it's, it's working out really well. And that's, uh, again, where I get all of this, I get all this feedback and data and where the customized protocols have come through me giving guidance to people, and then it's like, okay, f share your feedback, do this, and let us know how it goes. And then hundreds and hundreds of people doing that, it's like, okay, we know this works universally for everybody as far as we can see. So do that protocol and then do this one as well. So does that answer your question? Go ahead. Hi. Can you speak about the results come from mitochondrial stimulation? Well part of it, yeah, part of it when it's when it's healing actual physical tissue, yes. Because we do know that from the research that the mitochondria, you know, it, but if you if you have it's basically if you have, you know, a car and you want to replace the tubing and degunk the tubes and that sort of thing, and it's basically, you know, you want to optimize the system, but if you don't put gas in the gas tank, the car's still not going to go anywhere. So you, you can only get a certain level of mitochondrial stimulation if it's taking energy from what's already in the system. It's not putting energy into the system, it's basically redirecting it and making it so that the mitochondria can work more effectively, but they still need the energy. Does that make sense? You'll what? I'll pick your brain more later. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, yeah, so, but yes, the, the answer is yes. That it is the mitochondria, what we do know is that that's what's accelerating, for example, in wound healing and things like that because it kicks the cells into gear that have been lying there dormant. But when you go below that and it's like you need to look below at the energy body layer to look at, you know, you, first you need to put the energy into the system. And then, so when people don't have enough available energy, they'll get a certain level of healing by stimulating the mitochondria, but they'll still plateau. So that's why when people are like, why does your light therapy device work and none of these others do all of this? It's because they're just, that's just a light therapy device. This isn't just a light therapy device, it's also putting energy into the system, if that makes sense. Yes. Uh, hi, just wondering about your FDA status. Have you sought to get FDA approval and be a clinical device, or what's what's your status there? No, I'm not classifying it as a medical device. And light therapy, LED light as a healing modality has been FDA approved for many years. So using LEDs for stimulating healing, eliciting healing effects has been an FDA approved technology for a number of years. I'm not classifying this as a medical device, and that actually gives freedom to a lot of the medical doctors that are using it to be able to prescribe it to their patients essentially, but you know, here, get this thing and use it. Um, so it gives them a lot more latitude and flexibility at the same time. And right. also makes it where I can make something that's extremely affordable for people that, and that was really the big thing for me. The price point is $599 or $649. I've got four different formulations. So depending on what the formulation is, it's affordable so that anybody can afford to buy one. And you see all these light therapy devices that are thousands of dollars out there, you know, especially the ones in the beauty industry that are like, they're selling them for thousands, literally thousands of dollars just to like stimulate collagen in your face. So, and this one, again, you know, and this is something that all of my customers use it for beauty and anti-aging, but I don't focus on that. It's like first when they're, when they're dealing with like a life-threatening illness or chronic pain or whatever, they first they want to get rid of the pain, but they also want to get rid of the wrinkles. So. And just one follow-up question. Do you have any information on the success rate of this product with different modalities? So. Like you mentioned a couple of case studies with brain cancers, for example. Mm -hmm. Do you have information across those different disease types of the success rate of the product or just a couple of case studies? 
No, thousands, literally thousands of case studies. I'm not exaggerating. Um, and I don't know how many related to brain. Brain case studies about um, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, intracranial hypertension, traumatic brain injury, dozens of those. Like, well, more than that. But one of my customers is a neuro, uh, um, neurooptometrist, and she specializes in traumatic brain injury, and she uses it with all of her traumatic brain injury patients. She also uses it for herself because she has two clinics, so she's bouncing back and forth between three-hour time difference every other week and never has jet lag because there's a jet lag protocol that's the same as the sleep induction protocol that it helps you go to sleep whatever time you want you put it on your chest and it stimulates melatonin production and it makes you go to sleep in the new time zone so i haven't had jet lag and i travel all around the world in over two years so it's like and that again a lot of these things were accidental discoveries after launching this like i didn't plan on it being a sleep inducing thing what we discovered is that people started using it myself included it's like, oh my God, this is phenomenal for making you go to sleep. So, and all kinds of stuff. Like I didn't, you know, the thyroid thing. That's people in the community. It's like, you know, I just wanted to, I felt like I should treat my thyroid. And guess what? It's like after a week, I didn't need to take my medication anymore. So yeah, proof of, proof of concept, I mean, thousand times over. And that's, again, these are all shared directly in that private members only community. So you don't have to take my word that I'm not <laughs> making these stories up. I have people that post in there. It's like, if this hadn't happened to me, I would not have believed it. So, yes. Um, if people are using this for multiple modalities, uh, is there a danger of overuse? Uh, no, and what we found is that you can't overdose on it. And you kind of like, it's like animals will sometimes treat themselves for hours. Other days they have no interest in treating them. And animals are very intuitive, just like children. So, but you, you know when you're done. It's like, I feel like, huh, I feel like I've had enough. But I have people when they first get it, because they are so depleted, they want to treat one, two, three hours a day. And I designed it so you can integrate it in your daily routine. So you can be, you know, watching television in the evening or reading a book or working on your computer and doing your treatments while you're doing other things. You don't have to stop and just do these treatments. So, and I, because I'm a consummate multitasker, I'm like, I would never use something if I have to stop and do just that treatment. And I knew from experience, experimenting with other light therapy devices for years, like all the shortcomings of the things that were out there. So I just wanted to make something that would be universally applicable, but also heal at the root of illness and disease and be much more than just a light therapy device. Okay, okay. guys, unfortunately, uh, there is no more questions. Anything you'd like to finish off with? No, I think if anybody has questions, I'll be here and I'll be here through tomorrow. So you there can come and pick go. my brain. <laughs> Very good, round of applause. <laughs>